Vicarin fought back the sudden wave of panic. The rocky cliff was close by, and he was pretty certain that by the looks of the great beast, it wouldn't be able to navigate it too well. However, if he fell again, it would be certain death. If he could make it to the shore, he might be able to outrun the creature, fleeing through the island jungle. The shore was a little farther away than the cliff, though, so he'd have to swim quickly. And already he could tell that this beast was a much faster swimmer than he. He had no time to waste, and he decided to go for the cliff. Uh, Vicarin makes an athletics check to swim. He rolls a 16, and that is a success. Vicarin quickly got himself to the surface of the water and began heading for the cliff. The waves near the cliffside were rough, but he pushed his aching limbs onward. The pain in his body made him almost want to give up, but his will to survive was much stronger. Stroke after stroke, his arms went, pulling him ever closer to the rocky cliffs. His hands felt the wet surface of the cliff and he grabbed on. The whale beast was closing in behind him, charging quickly through the water. He had little room for error. He makes an athletics check to climb. He gets a 21. That's a success. He climbs up about 15 feet. Uh, his first attempt was successful, and he pulled himself out of the water with his hands and his feet, ascending as quickly as he could without jeopardizing his steadiness. Uh, he continues to make athletics checks to climb. His next one's a 16. That is a success. He is now 35 feet above the surface of the water. But Karen's heart pounded. He was gaining elevation and fast, but directly below him, the whale beast circled in the water. He was getting close to the ledge cut into the cliffside, the very ledge that he had fallen from earlier, nearly costing him his life. He could not slip up now. Uh, his next athletics check is... 24. He has now ascended the full 50 feet. Uh, he pulled himself up onto the narrow ledge path that lie half crumbled along the side of the cliff, leading directly back into the great stone face that was the initial entrance into this ruin. He flattened himself up against the side of the cliff, trying as best he can to hold on, and waited to catch his breath. Below him, the whale beast continually waited, just below the waves. Vicarin had noticed that the creature had two pairs of legs, not human-like legs as the whale god had in the depiction on the ruined wall, but bestial legs, like those possessed by some great behemoth. He was certain that the thing would be able to move on land, but it clearly was unable to climb up a sheer stone cliff. After several minutes, the beast showed no signs of leaving. It appeared quite intent on making Vicarin into a meal. Uh, Vicarin's going to make an insight check in regards to what this thing is doing, what its motivations are, how it might have any connection with him and his current situation. His insight check's a four, which is a failure. He doesn't really glean anything. Vicarin was badly hurt and exhausted. He needed to rest to allow his body to recover, but he could not uh, do that here on the narrow ledge, and especially not with the whale beast nearby. The thought of trying to balance across the precarious ledge once more, and all just to get back inside the ruin, did not seem like much of an option at all. He looked up, and he estimated it was probably about another 50 feet up to reach the top of the cliff. He had not seen uh, what exactly was up there, but he decided to take the chance. It can't be worse than my current spot. If I can just get some distance between me and that beast, get into the jungle. Vicarin's going to make some more athletics checks here. His first athletics check is a little bit lower. He gets a 14. Uh, he starts to climb, and he feels the ground beneath him partially crumble away. He almost slips, but he catches himself. He doesn't go anywhere. Uh, his next athletics check's a 22. That's a success. That now gets him up to, let's see, 65 feet above the surface of the water. His next check's a 17. He is now 85 feet up. Again, he rolls another 14. Um, he grabs onto a rock. He just can't gain much of a grip. He almost slips once again, 
but catches himself. <clears throat> What's happening here is he's not failing his athletics check by five or more. So he's not falling, but he's not really making any progress either. Uh, his next check is a 17. That is a success, and he has ascended the full 100 feet of the entire uh, height of the cliff. Vicarin let out a tormented cry. Ah! His arms and legs burned with pain. His lungs felt like they were filled with thick, sappy acid. He pulled himself up onto the top of the rocky cliff. He crawled a few feet from its edge and rolled onto his back. The sounds of the waves below were now fainter, and the burning, chirping drone of the jungle was now getting louder. A moment later, he slowly lifted himself off the hard stone ground. The top of the cliff was uneven, so he moved along it slowly. Large rocks jutted out at different angles and chunks of rubble were strewn about. He staggered this way for a minute or so, and then found himself at the edge of the jungle. Its warm, humid atmosphere was familiar to him, and though slightly stifling at first, it was more welcome than the chilling, old dampness of the ruin. Damn that place, he thought, and damn every Herosian that ever walked upon this island. He knew the jungle held plenty of dangers of its own, but for the time, none of them were immediate. He slowly paced through the lush undergrowth, past low-hanging vines and mossy tree trunks. The chittering of life was all around him. The calls of birds, monkeys, and insects was a never-ending chorus. And as he moved on, he kept an eye out for hazards or signs of nearby predators. And most of all, he looked for a suitable place to shelter himself and rest. So he will make a nature check to do so. He rolls a 24. He rolled really good there. Uh, and he does have some training in nature. Uh, Vicarin found a small patch of elevated ground partially covered by thick trees. He collected some leaves and brush, just enough to give himself a basic bed, a little bit of cover, and uh, he got a small smoldering fire going and fell into the overwhelming grasp of unconsciousness. Vicarin's resting spot was in fact idyllic given his circumstance. He slept there deeply, and except for the occasional passing bug, he rested undisturbed. His dreams, on the other hand, were dreadful and strange. Sacrifices done by blade and flame. Intense uh, glares from strange men and women wearing masks that covered their faces. Immense half-beasts from some unknown age. And all throughout, a deep rumbling chanting like a thunderous voice muted through water. A shrill cry awoke Vicarin. His eyes thrust open and he sat up with a jolt, reaching for his long spear. He quickly realized, however, that the intense sound that he was hearing was that of two monkeys fighting nearby. He laid back down as the nightmares faded from his mind into obscurity and he laughed. Long and hearty he laughed, a knowing laugh. I beat you, he shouted aloud. Give me your traps, your pictures of misbegotten half-gods. I'm a berserker of the Anai Tiran, and this is our island! He laughed again, then chuckled, then simply lied there staring up at the treetops, letting the glorious sensation of accomplishment wash over him. He was not sure how long he had slept for, but it was well into the next day. He stood and stretched. He was sore all over, and he had a number of bruises and scabbed cuts, but all in all he felt refreshed and ready to move on, ready to get back home. He drank deeply from his water skin and ate the last of his dried fish and sunfruit, satiating the gnawing hunger that he had awoke with. He knew the journey home might contain challenges of its own, so he would travel with his wits about him. The trip here had took him three days. Uh, the first two were spent cutting through the jungle, and the last was walking upon the winding coastline. He had not really encountered any dangers on the jungle on the way here, uh, but he knew the jungle had many fearsome beasts that were never far away. The coast was generally accepted as being safer, but the thought of encountering the whale beast again was not comforting. 